I'm sitting with Doug Palmier, and uh, we're going to talk about a great story and where it's been where it is and where we hope to go with HP2G here in Wauseon. First off, Doug, great to see you. Thank you. This is not your dad's or your grandpa's V8 we're going to be talking about, and uh, your spirit of inventiveness and uh, from conceptual to uh, putting something on the road and where we want to take it from here. When I heard about this story first off, the first thing that caught my mind, and I guess the attention of the general public, is a vehicle that is capable of getting 110 miles to the gallon. I mean, in this day and age, that's something very exciting. Before we get specific on that, let's talk about Doug's history. Take me back to when you were a kid. When did that inventiveness or, uh, I guess, curiosity start in with engines and where you are today? Well, you know, you, you always had to make put together models. So I, mean, I remember getting models and putting them together. So it goes back that far. Okay. When did the interest uh, come other than the models to say, hey, maybe this is something I want to do for a living and get really get my hands dirty, so to speak? Well, uh, they, then you go into go-karts and, you know, from go-karts into real cars. And you got, um, I guess, a lot of guidance from your dad and grandfather, you were telling me, that uh, they were guys that were always curious and uh, really had that inventive spirit, too. Well, and they were working on, um, you know, Inventions to help out things, you know, um, this goes back into the 40s, so. But um, this this engine here is my engine. It's not necessarily their engine, and I didn't really take any part of their engine, but it's still the, the idea of continuing it out as as the, uh, the family trait. Okay. Let's talk about your, your past as, uh, I guess, as a mechanic first off and, and, and getting some engineering experience to uh, where we are today. But uh, it was in a, a Ford dealership. You got your hands really dirty for the first time. Well, yeah. Well, I, you know, I worked at dealerships in, in, the, uh, in the service area and, uh, you know, worked on quite a bit of things there. And I didn't make them, but obviously there's still problems that you see. And, you, and you're always thinking about how you can make it better. And you need to open some eyes up out there. And uh, to, to get an idea in front of people is an interesting concept. I want to explore that right now. When the concept of this engine, this, this hybrid engine, which is uh, part uh, electric, part, part ethanol that we're going to be talking about more specific, you know, everybody's got those ideas out there. It's getting your idea in front of people. And you had to open up some eyes. And, and that took some doing. Well, the first thing is proving your product. So go out and test it prove it. Um, I started out as drag racing, you know, playing with the products there that I have. Um, and then, you know, we have products that, that we already manufactured, patented, um, that, that has financed this project to this point even. Let's talk about, you were talking about patent before we uh, hit camera today. There's a patent on the idea. Tell me, tell, explain that to me. There's different patents, mm -hmm. and um, the patents that that I actually go after is called a utility patent. It's a the patent of the idea, so that it cannot be changed because you can't change an idea. They usually change a design, and that usually voids their the other person's patent. But in this case, it's the idea of, and then you hold that patent for 20 years. Hybrid is really a, a term that is, I guess, grasped the public over the past couple of years. It's been around for quite some time, but hybrid is one of those things that you're seeing. All of the uh, cars now coming out as their so-called hybrids, and your hybrid engine, of course, is uh, uh, one that uh, developed. How many years ago would you say this idea came to you? Uh, I've been working on it more than 10. More than 10. And, uh, but at that time, I mean, hybrid wasn't a common phrase out there, was it? No, it wasn't. Um, but hybrid means two energy sources. Um, I have two energy sources inside my engine. A normal hybrid car has both an electric motor and an engine. So at that point, you know, mine is combined in one power plant. Okay, let's break that down then too. First off, this is a V8, correct? It is a V8. Okay, and it, it's bro the, the hybrid aspect comes into the fuel. Let's talk about the fuel first. And uh, you're using E85, E85, which is an ethanol product. Tell us about that. It's 85% ethanol, 15% gasoline. Um, it does have less energy than gasoline. Um, it is a very clean type of fuel. Um, it's cellulose based, so it's corn or a grass or, or that type of base. It's not a wood base. 
All right, now let's talk about the other aspect of the electric portion of this engine. Tell us how that is functioning. There's two portions of that. One where we have an electromagnet that pushes the piston, and the piston has a, a permanent magnet in it. So it pushes it, and then it also pulls it. So I'm pushing and pulling the piston. So it is a rod and piston engine. And then around the crank, we have an electric motor around that crank also. So um, the crank normally, uh, in an electric motor, there's normally windings around around the, the center rotor, and they use brushes. Well, mine's a brushless, and it's exactly opposite. So I turn the electric portion around and, and put the the windings around the magnet. Also with this engine, you have the concept, uh, another concept of yours is the girdle. That is more or less holding this engine, too. Tell us a bit about that. Well, the, bracing everything and making it straighter and true is better. So even even in our engines now, they're twisting, and that's why we have gasket failures. A lot of times, you know, it, the pre-planned that, that the engine's going to go bad and, and you know, at some point you're going to have to buy it. And we're ten, we tend to be a throwaway type of society. Well, I think we're, we're going to have to change some of that and not have a throwaway type of society, have something that's really good that's going to last a long time and say, hey, if we, if we want to maybe retool the body and, and, and rechange the body or, and rechange the interiors, and, but keep, the, keep your engine, keep some of the parts that, that are going to outlast other parts of the car. Doug, conceptually, this almost sounds like science fiction because, you know, everybody gets excited. I got 28 miles to the gallon, you know, highway 32 miles to the gallon in these smaller cars. You come around, here's this guy from uh, the Midwest says, I can, my goal is to get an engine that produces 110 miles per gallon. I'm going to guess that a few doors were shut in your face when you tried to introduce that. Is that true? Well, everybody, you know, tends to be there a skeptic, you know, and, and tends to, you know, what they know is what they know, and I, I think we think inside the box too much, you know. And, but now if you talk to your child, you know, and they think outside the box because they don't, they don't, they haven't been programmed to think like that, you know. And and I think we need a pure thinking to move forward faster. You're very open-minded. I can tell that, and, and you're a true believer, and proof is in the pudding. So, take me back to this Mustang. T tell me about the year of this used Mustang that we loaded this engine in to to show the proof by that famous trip to Las Vegas. Take me back to why why that car and how that developed. Well, first, uh, the, I. You know, I've been developing an engine, but uh, I really hadn't shown it to the public at all. I'd just been racing and, and, and playing with it on, on that aspect and just playing with it literally. It, it didn't mean anything until, you know, I saw the Progressive Auto X Prize where it's a race for 100-mile-per-gallon vehicles, and there was a $10 million prize. Well, at that point, I said, gee, you know, $10 million could really help help this get along farther you know, funding a project. So I, I entered the Progressive Auto X Prize uh, and said, gee, uh, their goal is 100. I'm going to make mine 10% more. So I made it 110. So that was a personal goal, and we did achieve that uh, goal. Um, uh, the first drive that uh, I went cross country was in 2008 in November, and we drove out to Las Vegas to the SEMA show out there, and we were being we were showing the car at SEMA in their green zone so we drove out there and back and we did average above 100 miles per gallon on that trip so and we drove it straight um, I know everybody's you know the new concepts out there are electric vehicles well in my opinion I don't I don't want to drive 40 miles and plug in and say that's all I can go mm -hmm. but I still want mileage so that's why we went above that and said, okay, electric and fuel. You know, fuel's already in place and we can just fill up at a pump. And this was a true test because around here, conceptually speaking again, pretty flat. I mean, you can drive down county roads and it's pretty flat. You really got a taste of America and all types of terrain doing this too. That's correct. And, and that, that it's a good test bed, you know, driving it through the mountains, through the deserts, um, seeing all different types of terrains, um, you know, we drove to the Grand Canyon, which you you know you're above 8,000 feet at that point. I mean, there's difference in altitudes that make a difference in in how your 
car reacts even.